The Honourable Member for Thornhill. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you to the member for, uh, for Carleton and our next Prime Minister for sharing his time with me on proposing his important private member's bill. For those watching at home today, uh, they'll probably be familiar with our interventions during question period. And every day, our Conservative team stands up on behalf of everyday Canadians who are suffering after eight years of this Liberal NDP government. And our job, of course, is to hold ministers to account and try uh, we have a point of order. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Uh, Chair, Mr. Speaker, um, I was here for the Leader of the Opposition's speech. Uh, he did not mention at any point in time that he was sharing his slot with anyone. So I see... So may I just confirm it? I just want to confirm with the Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Uh, thank you for your statement, but I would like to reassure her that there was no time splitting between the two members. This is a single and standalone slot for this bill. That I have deputed. The Honourable Member for Thornhill. You have nine minutes and 30 seconds left. Our job here in the House of Commons is to hold ministers to account and try to get answers on the, thing, on the things about why so many things have gone wrong here in Canada. But every day, members on the other side of this House get up and insist that Canadians have never had it so good. They have never had it better. Things are going so well in this country as if they don't talk to anyone at home. And to make their point, they bring meaningless manufactured statistics that are supposed to show how great they, uh, they really are. But in fact, they show how out of touch and clueless they truly are. One of their favorite tactics is to talk about the global forces, other countries, wars in distant lands, to pass the buck from Ottawa to someone else, to somewhere else, to something else. And we're talking about housing today like we have been for many months and even years. But the Liberals still don't seem to get the message that a cost of, the, a cost of a home in this country is just too high for anyone. So I'm going to try to put it in terms that they will understand, showing, off, showing exactly how out of control our housing crisis has become. I'm going to take some prices and see what you can buy here and what you can buy elsewhere which of course has the added benefit of showing Canadians that this is a uniquely Canadian problem, at least in scope. Let's start in Toronto, a two-bedroom house covered in graffiti in, Kensing in the Kensington neighbourhood. It's on the market for $2.8 million. That very same amount of money can buy you a 20-bedroom castle on five acres in Scotland. It has 45 rooms, a movie theatre, botanical garden, a pond, and even a private beach. And you have the added bonus of living in a country with no carbon tax, Mr. Speaker. Don't you wanna if you don't want to live in the big smoke, I can understand. Well, I don't really understand why people don't want to live there, but I can understand why you would have your preferences. How about Kitchener, where there's another two-bedroom home up for the steal of, uh, of $1.8 million? Spoiler alert, it's not a steal at all. You get a tiny property with a little backyard and hardly enough room to raise a family. $1.8 million. And if you want a little bit more breathing room, you maybe consider spending that $1.8 million on a lake-facing castle in Sweden on a four-acre property. So there's, so there's much more space for everyone. If you're still not convinced, let's go to Vancouver, where the member opposite is from, where a three-bedroom house sells for $4.6 million. You also get to pay the highest gas prices in Canada, some of the highest taxes. You get to drive to, to work in an open where government supply drug market, which this NDP gov uh, Liberal government supports, on your way to work. Absolutely stunning, Mr. Speaker. If you prefer more peace and quiet, or maybe you want a bit of a deal. There's an 11th century castle in England up for sale for $4.4 million. It comes with 32 acres uh, of land, 22,000 uh, square feet of living space, including 17 bedrooms. It's quote unquote an idyllic retreat with farmland and even its own creek for fishing, rights included. I can go on and on. France 
Honduras, Argentina, Wisconsin. The fact of the matter is, is the Canada's housing market is so broken, and these Liberals are the ones who broke it, with the help of the NDP, of course. Housing prices have doubled in just eight years. A mortgage payment has doubled. The average income needed to buy a home in Ontario is over $175,000, and that's much more than the average salary, as we all know. No amount of partisan spin can minimize the fact that it is now cheaper to buy a cash in Europe than a family home in Canada. And if that doesn't convince these Liberals to tell them that homes are, home prices are unattainable to the average Canadians, I don't know what will. So we have to ask the question, what are people supposed to do? Young people looking to break in the market, pay off their student loans, start a job, maybe start a family. Nine in ten of those young people do not ever believe that they will own a home in this country. There are newcomers looking to Canada for opportunity and the life better than the one they left, like my parents did 48 years ago. Everyone else who is struggling under repeated double-digit increases in the cost of rent, it's doubled too in just eight years. It used to take you 25 years to pay off the mortgage. It now takes you 25 years in Toronto to save up for a down payment on a single family home. The answer is, of course, is that they can't do anything because affordability is too far out of reach. And despite working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, multiple jobs, cutting back on the things that you want, people are getting left behind and they are losing hope and they are giving up on that Canadian dream that was on offer even eight years ago. Things weren't like this eight years ago, and they are not going to be uh, like this when the Liberals are gone. Our mission is to bring that back, to ensure that you can get a good home in a safe neighbourhood through hard work, dedication and saving, the, the way that it always was in Canada, and to make Canada the place where we just don't have to compare the price of an average home to a luxurious castle in Europe, to make the point. It's going to take a new government with a new vision to do that. And we cannot and should not trust the same people who got us into this mess to get us out of it. And we should specifically not trust the same people who spend $54 million on a useless border app to companies who didn't even do the work on the app, who lose track of nearly a million people who have students living under bridges and tents, who can't bring themselves to put repeat violent offenders behind bars, who can't do anything close to competent. Our party is the only one with a common sense plan to put Canadians back into control of their own lives and return the promise of Canada that always was. Je regrette, uh, je regrette interrompre... I must unfortunately interrupt the member for Thornhill. The time provided for the consideration of private members' business has now expired, and the order is dropped to the bottom of the order of precedence on the order paper. The member will have three minutes remaining 